Now from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD broadcast studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to iFiber One News. I'm Alan Troop with your weekend edition. We will review some of the top stories for this week and a few of your favorites. And we have the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the iFiber One Weather Center. A top story this week was about how living history was shared between members of the Wanapum Band and students from the Columbia Basin. Here with the story is Jeff Chu. It was a Native American cultural event that captured the attention of school children from in and around Grant County. Archaeology Day was sponsored by Grant County Public Utility District and the Wanapum Band at the Wanapum Village PUD Operations Complex near Priest Rapids Dam. Archaeology Day drew about 260 children Wednesday from Moses Lake, Ellensburg, and Richland. It was an opportunity for the Wanapum to share the band's long-standing culture and heritage. The event exhibited and demonstrated everything from storytelling to basket weaving, arrowhead flint napping, tule map making, dugout canoes, and teepees. The Wanapum Heritage Center in Grant County PUD uh, put together this presentation uh, because of the uh, strong bond and relationship and the uh, importance of the area of where these dams have been built and because of the relationship that Grant PUD and the Wanapum have shared since the issue of the original license, uh, uh, that it was important for the Wanapum to express their um, uh, needs to the general public and educate the general public of their uh, continued existence here and their uh, requirements for the things that are important to them, you know, perpetuate their um, tradition, their culture, their beliefs. Chuck Allen, PUD public affairs officer, explained the PUD's history with the Wanapum that dates back some 60 years. We have a, a, a relationship with the, the Wanapum uh, going back to the 1950s uh, when uh, Priest Rapids Dam was built. Uh, it was built in the Wanapum homelands and since that time Grant PUD has partnered with the Wanapum Band to uh, be able to not only generate electricity on the Columbia River, but also to be able to preserve and protect uh, the uh, and perpetuate the Wanapum culture. Archaeology Day marks the PUD's agreement with the band to assure no sacred Wanapum sites are disturbed within the dam's project boundary. The day also has other significance to the Wanapum. This is a way that we can uh, include the uh, community, our schools, uh, you know, and uh, the people in the surrounding area that, uh, you know, uh, there are requirements and needs, you know, because of uh, different plants, different medicines that we still gather, different places that we still go to perform ceremonies and to educate the public that these things are still happening, that they, they're not gone, they're not textbooks, or they're not like archaeology stones and bones, that they're living cultures. The PUD and the Heritage Center are now building a new 50,000 square foot Heritage Center building, and it is expected to be completed next summer. I'm Jeff Chu for i One News. New Life Christian School in Ephrata found a new way to raise funds. They jogged. Students could have sold candy bars to raise money for New Life Christian School in Afreda, but this year they took the healthy route. About 115 kids from preschool to high school, basically the entire enrollment at New Life Christian School, walked across the street and ran around the field at Columbia Ridge Elementary School in the Jogathon. Three, two, one, great job! <laughs> New Life Christian School Administrator Matt Tucker explained the thought behind this year's fundraiser. In the past we've done candy bar sales and uh, I think the year before that we did candles. Um, 
And, and this year, I think the parent volunteer committee said, you know, why don't we do something that not only raises money for the school, but encourages good health and, and exercise. It's kind of one of the things that we've been talking a lot about in incorporating that into normal activities in the school. The money will go to our parent volunteer committee. And uh, with the parent volunteer committee, they'll take those funds and they'll do things to support the school. Jogathon organizer Sharma Williamson said the money raised will go into recreational improvements at the school. The money this year is going to kind of help fund our new playground. We're reconstructing the playground and so most of the money will go towards that. There's a couple of things earmarked for the money. Um, new basketball hoops, um, movable, adjustable ones. So that's, that's what we're doing with it this year. Tucker said a strong volunteer base of parents keeps the private school going strong. We obviously operate off of tuition, but we try to try to minimize the cost of doing private education by having things like this. We have an amazing parent volunteer committee uh, that does things like purchase new equipment for our school and playground. Um, they do things to support my staff and things that just our budget wouldn't be able to do elsewhere. New Life Christian School board member Adam St. Mary said the school is reaching out to the community. One of the things we're looking at doing is trying to help get tuition costs down as well as uh, get some awareness into the community on what the school is about, what they teach. Uh, one of the big missions of the school is to partner uh, with, with in, in the community with the things that God is doing. And so um, a lot of that is uh, developing leaders. The Jogathon's fundraising goal is $5,000. Top fundraisers earn a special prize that involves Administrator Tucker. The top two lap runners and the person that raises the most funds uh, gets to throw a pie in my face. I Tucker joked that he missed the board meeting in which that decision was made. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. People in the Columbia Basin love their pets as much as anyone. A national discussion is taking part to discuss the possible cause of illness and death in dogs from jerky treats. Here with the story is Vivian Huang. The Food and Drug Administration is investigating what it calls one of the most elusive and mysterious outbreaks. The federal agency has linked jerky treats for pets to illness in 3,600 dogs and 10 cats since 2007. The FDA encourages dog and cat owners for any information as they search for an exact cause of the illness. Things to watch for in the next really hours after it, it, they take it, they uh, eat it, or even days after, watch for vomiting, diarrhea, vomiting with blood, diarrhea with blood, or very mucousy diarrhea. And again, I'll see that for many other reasons but that's a good reason to call your veterinarian anyway. But if you have fed a jerky treat recently and they develop those clinical signs, it's really important to keep the package, especially the lot number. That will help the FDA in their investigation. Severe cases have involved kidney failure, gastrointestinal bleeding, and a rare kidney disorder. Well, I, I think to keep them safe, the most important thing is to know what you're feeding and to know that it's from a good manufacturer. Most of the jerky treats implicated have been made in China and a number of jerky pet treat products were removed from the market in January after a New York State lab reported finding evidence of up to six drugs in certain jerky pet treats made in China. If your dog or cat is showing any of the symptoms, take them to a vet and bring along any jerky treats you may have given them. For iFiber One News, this is Vivian Huang. Thank you, Vivian. Each of the people you see here has warrants for their arrest and is wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the DLC asks that you not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. We will be back after these messages with the latest from our iFiber One Weather Center and more news.